today I'm going to be throwing swirly mud bodies and I wanted to talk about pricing pottery because one of my first blog posts was about how I worked out how much to charge um, and a few people have reminded me about it recently but the posts are kind of quite buried now and a bit old so I wanted to revisit it. Um, the first thing to say is there's no right answer for pricing pottery, it varies so much based on what you're making, how much you can charge in your local area, what your competition's like, um, material costs, how much money you need. If you're living somewhere cheap, it's going to be completely different to if you're living somewhere hugely expensive, and so on and so forth. But you can work out um, a good starting point quite easily, actually. Um, you really, what you need to know is your material costs. Uh, typically, they're actually quite irrelevant, almost. So I reckon for a mug this size, this is a medium mug, about 350 grams of clay. So I think there's going to be about a pound's worth of material in this. And that includes the clay, the glaze, at bisque firing and glaze firing. So, in the grand scheme of how much you charge for a mug, a pound material costs not quite irrelevant, but not a huge factor. What's more important is how much money you need to make a month and how many mugs you can make a month, or how many of a particular type of piece you can make a month and therefore how much you need to charge to make the amount of money you need to make. So there are two ways of looking at it and they do actually vary massively depending on the piece which is good news for balancing your workload. But how many can you make in a month? So that's how long does an individual piece take time-wise. And then how many can you fire? And obviously a mug is quite time consuming, or even worse, you can have something like a teapot, where actually they're not that big, you can fit quite a few in the kiln, but you can't make that many because of the amount of time they take. Versus a large bowl, which actually in terms of throwing time might be the equivalent of throwing a few mug bodies, but it's not a huge amount of time. I think I could throw a big fruit bowl in say 10-15 minutes versus a few minutes for a mug body. But you can only fit a few of them in the kiln. Comparatively, you really can't produce that many a month. And that's going to really limit your earning potential if that's all you're selling. So what I did is I created a spreadsheet where you put in Ideally, you put in the exact numbers. So, you put in the cost of your clay, the cost of your glaze, the cost of your firing. Then, you put in how much a piece takes in terms of clay, how much it takes in terms of glaze, which, you know, is harder to measure, but you can approximate it. I think I put it on the spreadsheet, but I think it's, um, you could just uh, approximate it at one fifth of the clay. I think is what I said. I did work it out at one point, so whatever I said there was what I worked it out as. Um, which quite neatly happens to be uh, around the price difference between the two. So a pound's worth of clay will use a pound's worth of glaze because the glaze is more expensive but you use less of it. So there's that. Uh, and then you've got to know how many you can fit in a kiln if that's all you're putting in the kiln which you can sort of, you can guess at if you don't know exactly, or you could work it out. But um, obviously the, the more precise your numbers are, the better the approximation will be. I've only got a 60 litre kiln. I reckon I can fit, I could definitely fit 21 large or giant mugs in. Smaller mugs, it's a question of how tightly you pack them. Um, but I think I, I kind of said 28 for that. 
to give me an approximate number. Um, that gives you the amount you can produce a month um, based on how many firings you do a month um, and therefore gives you the upper limit of your production and what you would need to charge to make the amount of money you need to make to survive if all you did was produce mugs and then you could do the same again with something like fruit bowls to give you the other end of the scale where you can produce a lot of mugs you can't produce many fruit bowls you have to charge more for fruit bowls the other way of looking at it is time how long does each one take so you work out the total time either approximate it or break it down one of the spreadsheets breaks it down by section so how long it takes to throw trim etc etc to make it a bit easier to do that calculation but again how many can you make in a month um, and that's where uh, the bowls and mugs get flipped so you can make loads of bowls in a month obviously you just can't fire them so fine that gives you another calculation uh, and then the spreadsheet will work out how much each one's going to cost how many you can produce and therefore what you would need to charge each month if that's a bit wobbly, if that was all you were making and that will give you a starting point for pricing things now obviously that doesn't take an awful lot of things into account there's going to be so many other factors that aren't accounted for in it like rent and wastage and so on and so forth but it does give you a starting point and lets you compare items like I said a mug and a bowl completely different depending on what you're looking at and actually you'll find that the best way to kind of optimise what you're doing is to produce a mixture you want some big quick things and some small intricate things you don't want all or nothing unless you've either got a massive kiln or a tiny kiln um, but obviously you'll see when you sit down and work out the numbers you don't need to use a spreadsheet you can do it relatively quickly in your head just ballpark them but it's much easier to work out how much you should be charging when you've got an idea of those variables of course the other way of doing it is just to look what other people are charging in your area for similar pieces if you can find someone in your area making similar work and you happen to know that they're in a similar position to you as in if you're trying to live off it they're living off it or if you're doing it as a hobby they're doing it as a hobby because you don't really want to be pricing your work as a professional parter based on someone else's hobby where they don't actually need the money and they're just trying to cover their costs and vice versa um, so all there is to it really I mean a few great podcasts about respecting yourself enough to charge what you're worth and that is a very difficult thing to do when you're starting out I'll see if I can find the links to the podcast too because it's always good to listen to someone who's been through it saying they wish that when they started out they trusted in themselves enough to charge what they were worth um, on the flip side you don't want to be charging kind of prices that someone who's been doing it for a lifetime charge for your beginner work because it isn't worth that and then later on you'll feel like you kind of rip people off or that there's work out there in the world that you're not proud of and much easier to kind of sit with that if you charge beginner prices for beginner work as some some of my first pieces aren't going to be anywhere near what I'm producing now but that's fine because I didn't charge this much for them um, and I didn't sell many of them either so that's a bit of a constellation that's it really, I'll shove all the links in the description
um, have a look at the spreadsheet. If you use it and spot anything wrong with it or anything that could be improved, uh, please let me know. It's a work in progress, except that it never really progressed. I just posted it and haven't really thought about it until recently. But it's a useful exercise to do once at least.